You're now listening to From The Jump. Welcome to From The Jump, your source for all things hip-hop. I'm Syllable, and this is my co-host, Mr. White. Make sure you subscribe and leave a comment below saying, I subscribed, and we'll try our best to reply to your comment. We're here to talk about the new Youngboy NBA album that just got released, Colors. We want your opinion on this as well. What was your favorite track? What did you hate about the album if you did? And what is your opinion on our opinion for how we're going to review it for our album report card? So starting off, you know, Youngboy NBA his hometown is Baton Rouge. He's following the footsteps of other hometown heroes like Kevin Gates, you know, uh, Young Thug, as well as Boozy the Badass. And so at this point, he's coming out and he, he debuted at number two on the Billboard 200. So we're going to start it off. And let's just let's just talk about general feelings about the album. Like, what, what are your thoughts on that, Mr. White? Well, I've been following NBA Youngboy for a while. He's very prolific in terms of he's always dropping a project every year. I think he has a couple number ones already. And the crazy part about it is, is this guy's only 22 years old. But his style is always very intense. And it's very filled with kind of pain lace lyrics, things that talk about all the trauma that he's going through, as well as the hood environment that he's grown up in. So this follows that same vein. Colors is no different than his previous works. And you see more of a polished NBA young boy here, uh, but the same theme is on this project throughout. Yeah, definitely. The The album is is not what you want to be playing for your grandma after she gets out of church. This is uh, some hard-hitting lyrics about violence, drugs, and street life and the stuff that he's had to go through to get to where he's at right now. Uh, you know, NBA is only 22 years old. He's had a number of hits. And the fact that he's grinding and working really hard shows up a lot. So let's go ahead and talk about one of the tracks that caught my eye. It's the second track. It's uh, Bring It On. You know, in that he talks about rolling up on fools on the corner, murking cats left and right. It's very violent. And the thing is, is that when you're looking at this, uh, the bridge rhyme scheme, I really enjoyed. He's talking about Ring around the rosy, pussy trying to dome me, know the police own me, they know they can't clone me. And uh, he's a very uh, melodic rapper, right, for a lot of his stuff. It's interesting because if you check out some of NBA's interviews, he sounds he sounds different, right? While debating with the digital freelancer, C. Camis, on the difficulty of selling merchandise, uh, Young Boy states, Selling any form of merchandise virtually is extremely tricky to learn as there are tedious different steps which all require a unique skill set. The first step requires a creative mindset where you must cater towards the liking of your target audience with respect to design and colors. He goes on to talk about Google Analytics and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, wait, this is the same cat <laughs> that was talking, talking about, about market fools. <laughs> market fools, left and right, <laughs> running up on you. And he's like, put the Google Analytics and it's, it's, it's an interesting contrast, right? So... Well, you could tell he takes care of his business because every time he's releasing music, his brand is very thorough. He doesn't seem to spend a lot of time out in the clubs or showing up with other rappers. He really doesn't have anything uh, that he's getting into with these other guys. Like he has his back home troubles, but he's pretty much only showing up when he's doing a feature with people so it's very interesting mm, yeah uh, i don't really like that bring it on track i i don't think that it really caught me the first song that got me was no switch uh i think that that that's being the third track on here had a lot of the same energy as bring it on uh it also has some interesting things that he was talking about in terms of the ak doesn't come with a switch it was already automatic yeah. and a lot of people are talking about these glocks that they put switches on to make them automatic and that's becoming really popular in rap culture but he's saying he doesn't need that i mean what's the point of having a semi-automatic weapon that you make automatic when you could just get an automatic weapon he's like basically he's saying you know in this song no switch that they doing too much it's pointless there's and already that, a better model that and exists, that song right? was sponsored by AK-47 manufacturers <laughs> <laughs> all over America, but yeah. not the NRA. Different crowd. Exactly. But, uh, so another track that caught me was uh, track, the fifth track, which is called Tuhu. And uh, the beat catches me immediately with like that synth pop sound. Really catchy. Uh, I like it. And it's interesting because so he's talking about murder, American Fools. This is the, the default track about a woman, right? There's got to be a track about a woman. Every hip-hop album has one. And so this is, this is Young Boy NBA's track. But even then, even then, he can't stop talking about murder. Even on his like soft tracks with the women. You know, he talks yeah. about, uh, grab her hair, she throw it back. I'm hitting it, giving her the business murder scene. I stick to up her body. No, I had to kill it. 
uh, it's just funny because I'm like, wait, this is this is your romantic track. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that song for me was too bubblegum. It's almost unbelievable because he goes from no switch and bring it on to yeah. this track, but it also leans itself back to the fact that he's 22 years old. He's yeah. still a kid. Yeah. He still wants to be a kid. He still wants to be in love and have fun. So it, it's very interesting that he has these two very complex and opposing forces in his life where he's trying to be a young man yeah. growing up and experience that, but he's so entrenched in this trauma of the hood life that exactly. he, he can't it can't even escape his love songs. And you no, know, overall, I'm gonna sucks. say this is this is kind of sad, right? Like I, I'm I'm gonna really try to say we need to watch these artists and their mental health, right? Mental We're health in love important. with their music and we really enjoy it. But if you listening to what he's really saying, he's he's got some baggage here and yeah. hopefully he could get through this and not end up you know in a pine box essentially yeah we're, we're gonna hope he's not entering that coffin too early it sounds like he's got a lot of stuff on his mind and then speaking of switching it up he goes to dc marvel now of mm. course on that track i'm a comic book geek right i love the marvel <laughs> movies not all of them right but uh you know i'm an iron man fan and so he's talking about the comics in here a little bit and weaving it in and it is a huge contrast uh i, I thought the uh there was some interesting synth whistles on this beat as well as really nice bass line i like that shit i really like the the hooks uh tonation right he says mm. I'll be turning up till tomorrow, right? Getting the whip like Spider-Man, Batman, DC, Marvel. Like, he's got a nice pitch switch on that. It's very catchy. And then he raps lines like, really kind of, so he's he's all bubblegum rap kind of with some of this. <laughs> and then he switches it up and he's like, I don't drink Coke just for my teeth. Just need Coke, don't need no weed. Railing little shorty like Luigi. Hit her from the back. I'm like, hui, smoking these cigarettes I can't breathe. Tell me where I buy new lungs. Tell me where I buy new heart. Only if that was like, young boy, slow your roll. You don't yeah. need to be thinking about, you know, organ transplants at 22. 22 yeah, <laughs> I mean, and it's, this is once again one of those situations where it's like, is he really escaping the stuff that he needs to be getting away from? And it's like the the production of this project overall is just so beautiful. Yeah. Every beat matches his vocal pattern. And you could tell that whoever is helping him produce these projects, uh, whether it's previous ones or this one, they know what his sound needs yeah. to be. So, like, I, I like that song. I thought it was, once again, a little too cheesy for me. It, I thought did, it, it was, didn't grab me. I thought it you was know. kind of funny that in the hook, in the same hook, right, he talks about, I love you in the hook, but then also talks about coming in the girl's face. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I know that younger generations are more sexualized, <laughs> but, like... All right. I mean, if that's how you want to roll. Maybe she's into that. You, you know? know, maybe so. You also, know. when thinking about uh, NBA style, it's interesting because a lot of popularized hip hop that's, you know, very on the top 10 list, right? It's half step. It's 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 not fast. Yeah, he's, he's very, very quick. Fast. He's yeah. very quick. Super fast. And I think he kind of goes into that, like, on the How You Been track. Like, it's, it's kind of like, I think that track is the one where it's like a breakneck pace on it. Like, it almost feels like... He's rapping before the beat ever got on. And it just he just keeps going and going and going. This is track number seven of this 19-track project. This man yeah. really had a lot to get off his chest, right? And, uh, you know, what's the next song that you wanted to highlight? Uh, I think uh, Expensive Taste was a pretty solid track on here. That was all right. It didn't really catch me. Uh, really, you know, so I first of all, I thought DC Marvel was going to be my favorite track. But... Really, what caught me is uh, Cage Feelings. Uh, that that that's an intense one. That that's caught intense me track. personally. I love that shit. It's you know, growing up in the hood myself, growing up beneath the poverty line. You know, Mr. White and I have also had to go through a lot to get to where we're at right now. So having that feeling, you're you're stuck in a cage despite trying to get out of it. That's definitely a universal feeling. A lot of folks that have not been born with a silver spoon feel like. And so I like the, the melody and the hook as well. You know, see me go. Like, he's got this kind of nice mel um, melodic sound to there. As I fly away from these N-words. They, they just, just want to keep up in my business. I say, fuck them. They don't need me. No, right? He's got that kind of downward sound. So, and and then it just really struck me, right? Because in, in every relationship, business, personal, family, right? Trust is important. Mm -hmm. And he talks about... I'm wasting time on these bitches. I'm wasting time. As soon as I trust them, I'm in trouble. Yeah. God. This song is one of those songs that shows that he really wears his heart on his sleeve. Like, yeah. he's not afraid to tell you that 
he doesn't enjoy the fact that he has to do certain things for people to get the respect or to get the love. He really doesn't feel the love, though. Right. He's he's doing stuff for other people constantly, constantly. And then when it's time for reciprocation, he's not getting anything. And he's like, damn, I should have never put myself in this position in the first place. And it leaves him with a lot of regret. And a lot of artists don't even want to admit that they have regrets. They have yeah. so much ego that they're like, I've done everything right to this point and everything's perfect. Once again, young boy is, is so much a person who just has full emotion on display yeah. at every second of every track. Well, in his track, he talks about how dealing drugs harden him up and how he doesn't give a fuck because he's numb. Right? He doesn't even mm. care about anything because he felt really bad. He talks about how he grew up without anything, so he wants his kids to have something. Right, And no. that's definitely a feeling I know. You know, my son, I didn't grow up with very much. I want him to have a lot. So I really resonated with this track. And a lot of the, the, the cadence in here I really liked. He was talking about, uh, I'm, I done lost my patience in that prison. I done lost my cadence cases pending. I see the fakeness faces grinning. Could see they don't want me in it. If I can't trust her, I can't love her. I done walked away from plenty. Right? So much in that. And then the catchy melody enters in again. And the second verse comes with that bittersweet reflective lyrics again. Smile through it all. They ain't asking where my pain went. Or even if it left, it never did. I ain't got a frame shit. After all, it's still the same shit. After all, I ain't gained shit. This is the rapper who, at 22 years old, is net worth around 6 mil right now. And he's still saying he ain't gaining shit, right? So he's dealing with these emotional issues. And I mean... We've all been in those situations where we know a person is bad for us, especially in relationships, yet we keep going back to them. And we keep going back to them, and that toxic relationship continues to happen. And he talks about that uh, with those lines where he's talking about, you know, wasting time on these bitches, and if I trust them, I'm in trouble. There's yeah. also a, a nice guitar solo uh, or riff in the background echoing as the track ended. But that, that track caught me immediately. Yeah, I really enjoyed that track as well. It's probably one of the best tracks on here. Anytime he is introspective or re reflective on his life, those songs are better than the ones with the bravado and just talking about the killing and the murdering. It's like, okay, I understand that this is a big part of your identity, but at the same time, like, who are you really on the inside? Like, is that killing and murdering and that violent mentality making you feel better? Probably not, right? Like, probably not. It's probably contributing to some of this pain and trauma that you're having. So that was a good track. And you know, maybe that maybe that track for uh, the Marvel DC one. Maybe he was so poppy and happy there because he just killed someone. <laughs> now, now he's in a good mood. He's like, ah, oh, don't have to worry about them fools anymore. It's, it's my too blood. manic. It's too <laughs> manic for me. It's like I can't believe that you can be that up and that down without you having mental issues, right? Like if you're yeah. that happy and that sad at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, it's troubling, right? Like he's he, he seems unstable, bipolar, musically, right? Like bipolar. Well, well, so I wanted to say something real quick on the bipolar nature of this. So, like you know, on a track, gangster. That's basically a diss track towards an elite chopper who they've been yeah. he's been beefing with for a while but then he's been seen handing out food plates to uh, homeless people in baton rouge to help out with the less advantage because he grew up really bad as well and now he's a millionaire right so it's this interesting flip side we see that he's a complicated guy he's not just all thugging and he's not just all about american people he's got multi dimensions in that we hope he, yeah. he makes it through right so and this gangster track is the only feature you have Quando rondo on here yeah who also has an amazing voice but very much like in be a young boy he has trouble getting shows because his content is really dark right like if you listen to a lot of Quando Rondo's music he's talking about killing he's talking about robbery drug dealing and I think it's it's very troubling that sometimes we just listen to this music and we gloss over the pain and the trauma that these people are going through and we just accept that it's safe, face value is just poppy music no I mean there's something going on there I mean people should look into it yeah you know and people shouldn't just say this is just music. It's more than music. It's He's something going else going it. on. Yeah. And so then for the like the last four or five tracks, that could almost be a separate EP. Yeah. For like the emo rock star, emo love, right? Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. And for the last track that we're going to cover today for our album report card before we get to our ratings for uh, this Colors album by Youngboy NBA, we're going to talk about Foolish Figure. Oh. Now, Foolish Figure, that was another track, you know, that hits you right away. And for, for this, like, 
I really like it because he's talking with his government name. You know, he's saying, I need you to hold on, Kentrell. You got to carry on and don't fall. They know that I got to get it on by myself. So, you know, growing up on the streets myself, as I've mentioned in other podcasts, right, that self-motivation factor to get yourself through those dark days and you feel like there is nothing left that's going to keep you alive to the next morning, right, that self-talk inside your head, that's it's it's important. So it's it's I thought it was pretty amazing to see him reveal some of that inner narrative. And then, you know, he talks in a he talks very much so about this following culture where everybody's idolizing everyone in social media, in music, in entertainment. And then the foolish figure part is, uh, you know, basically part of the course where he's coming in and saying that y'all just follow me thinking that I'm perfect, but I'm really just a foolish figure, which is he's saying that look at the actions that I'm taking and look at the problems that I'm getting into. But yet you think this is an amazing life. It really isn't. The money isn't fixing his problems. He still got baby mama drama like everybody else. Mm -hmm. He's still going in and out of jail like everybody else in the hood. And it's like. He's trying to figure his way out of this nonsense. And I think he's also trying to tell people, don't just follow me because you think it's cool. Like, look at my life and try to learn from my life. I'm, I'm not the best guy to be an example for how everyone else should be living. And I, and I like that. I like that he's not just telling people to yeah. do what I do. He's like, I'm doing what I'm doing. Let me do me. And you go do whatever you want to do. You know, he talks about not judging people yeah. for wanting to go to school and do that whole thing. And, yeah. and it, it, it reminds me of a I Ain't Mad At You from Tupac where, you know, he talks about we were once two brothers of the same kind type of thing. Where it's like he sees people on different paths and he knows that he's on this path. Yeah. But don't just come and try to jump in his lane because you think that, oh, this lane over here is better. It's right. not. And it's, it's not, not necessarily. And then you look at, you know, Nas and his King Disease album, I think think part one or two i forget but he talks about you know rapping and his lifestyle in ways that his son can learn from yeah and and, and how to leave that legacy young boy nba is out on the streets doing this shit as opposed to nas who's more about like protecting his shit he's got his stake you don't fuck with nas but he's not like instigating yeah no. boy nba is out there instigating and we hope he you know he stays alive long enough but uh for our album report card Right. So we got three different categories. You know, first of all, is beats and production. Then the second one is standout moments. And the last one is album weight class. Where does this stand amongst other albums of its niche? You know, other, other albums in that category. Right. So where does this stand out? So beats and production, I'm going to say this is definitely an A. You know, it's 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 good stuff. Maybe B plus, but uh, I I really like the the production on here. I'm gonna say hey, he's always been good at picking production that's right for him. Like I said, I don't know who's engineering and producing him, but they got the right stuff for him. And the beats are very detailed. This isn't trap bubblegum stuff. This is very laced in in guitars and pianos. It, it, you barely even hear the trap sound besides the heavy 808s, yeah. but the drum patterns aren't simplistic. This is this is very drums. developed music, and I think that he kind of goes for more of an orchestral sound yeah. instead of just going for the typical trap snare beats. And I like that. And I, I think that's what draws you into Young Boy because he knows that he's trying to do something a little bit more unique. I think it, it, it leans more to Lil Wayne and like yeah. you say, Kevin Gates, yeah. these guys that really enjoy robust production. So yeah. I, I, I would say A on the production. Yeah. And it's not surprising, given his background in Baton Rouge, that he's m melodic like Kevin Gates is melodic, but still being gangster like Kevin Gates is still gangster. He's yeah. not just all sing songy, right? And uh, I love the the synth pastel sounds and the drum patterns. Like I really enjoyed the instruments of that. So for our next category for standout moments, I would definitely say for me for my standout moments, it's going to be you know uh, Cage feeling because that whole track made me relive not in a bad way. The uh, the kind of times in my youth that I learned from these experiences and not using the fact that I was going through adversity to keep me in that cage, but to motivate me to escape it. Right. And I think that was a big standout moment for me. What about you, Mr. White? For me, I really liked Emo Rockstar. The reason why I like that is because I feel like it's a it's a progression for him. He sounds more like Juice World or mm. Little Uzi Vert I can see that. or even a, a Trippy Red. And I think these artists have a lot of dynamics to them that will make them last a long time. And if he moves towards that sound more instead of being the gangster rapper that he already is, I think he can have a longer longevity, right? Like yep. everybody's into like the emo trap music that kind of Post Malone is made super popular. So I think his voice 
can be a part of that sound as long as he keeps his life together. So emo rock star, it sounds like a progression, right? Nice. He's using w- more developed production, yeah. and he's not just talking about his typical topics. And I mean, I do believe that he is very emo, right? Like you hear the sadness and the trauma emo throughout with an AK. all of his. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a but that's a new thing. Like you know, me and my wife talk about it all the time. Like we like emo rappers, right? We like these very sad, kid Cudi. trauma filled rap kid Cudi. Yeah, we love that stuff so it's like yeah yeah, shout out to all of the people who are you know dealing with their feelings and they're putting it into their music instead of hiding it right show us that because that passion makes the music really great i agree i agree and i I like emo rockstar a lot too that was one of my my favorite tracks off the album we get to album weight class i'm gonna say it's a solid middleweight not a heavyweight and part of the reason why and this is one of my biggest critiques you can disagree argue with me in the comments on youtube please i dare you to because for me this album was monotonous as fuck you know I'm going to say it's like he had three different segments of it, didn't really blend it well together. It didn't transfer well together. He pops up and down, up and down like a bipolar version of a rapper. And then I'm, I'm sorry, but like I've 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 drive bys happen in the neighborhood I grew up in. I don't want to hear that at every single track. It get, the violence gets monotonous. I'm like, look, please, young boy, let me hear you flossing. Let me hear about your diamond necklace and your bitches more. What are, what's your ride, all right? Uh, he talks about, in the Snow Bunny track, he got a girl the same color as Rolls Royce. I like that. Let's see more of that because it just gets redundant. Yeah, I can see that. I'm going to also, I'm going to give him a, I'm going to give him a cruiser weight, right? You know, a little bit under heavy weight. I think within the sound that he's in, it's probably not too many artists that can compete with him, mm-hmm. right? The the vocal inflection and the melodic nature, he sounds so good on a track to the point where I don't even think he really needs autotune. I think he just yeah. uses it because a lot of people in his generation in are style. using it. But overall, yes, it did become like listening to background music. After about track 10, it, it was hard to get back into the project. I was just kind of hearing it. And I think that he's not really experimenting enough. He needs mm-hmm. to step outside the box, show people that he could do something besides just his melodic rap. And maybe, you know, for artists like himself, he's like, I don't really care. You see, I'm getting a number two Billboard charting album yeah. with this type of project. Why would I switch it up? He's got right? the formula. But I do like artists who take risk, right, that, that aren't going gonna just go at the project knowing that oh if i pick these beats and i and i rap like this i know i'm gonna get a hit yeah it's like okay well yeah but like you say it's too formulaic yeah and i want to see him take some more risk but i i I mean he's 22 right you got a 22 year old that that has several number ones and now another uh, number two let's see a freestyle battle between him and nle chopper i want to see that i thought he i thought chopper was in jail (laughs) apparently he's out he's still releasing this i thought he was locked away but he's he's so they you know they still chopper's an answer interesting guy i don't i don't (laughs) the thing is is i don't want those two guys to murk each other yes yeah i don't don't, yeah i'm I'm tired of seeing these artists take out each other for whatever reason it's like just getting y'all all all getting money man get this money stop live nice focusing on killing each other right like it's you don't i mean i think it's a lot of egos that go around but swallow that pride and try to live like jay-z and Nas. they both came from the streets exactly they both had something to prove but they took the beef they put it on record they squashed it and they moved on with their lives just put it on record exactly move on with your life you don't actually have to go kill the man in real life right So, so i think that that's the the risk and some of this stuff yeah i would love to see them you know do a a, a traditional rap battle that would be but dope. i also don't i think these young kids don't really like that they no. they they take everything so personally <laughs> and you know uh, i mean i just want to see actual skill and floss and other outside the studio yeah. right freestyle is still an art you got to master that shit as well listen did you agree with our opinions about this new album colors by young boy nba did you disagree please comment like and subscribe below and tune in next time for another episode of from, from the, the jump, jump. Peace.